Instrumental variables are useful because they can be used for correcting for endogeneity. But they are also useful because they can be used for testing endogeneity as well. Why would one want to test for the presence of endogeneity in data? The reason for that is that when you use instrumental variable estimation, you typically lose lots of efficiency. So the estimates become more less precise than they would be without the instrumental variables. Also some instrumental variable techniques such as two-stage least squares is biased in small samples and in the presence of weak instruments. For these reasons it is uh, useful to test for endogeneity and then make your decision on whether to apply instrumental variables or not based on that test. Of course uh, endogeneity should also be uh, treated theoretically so you should think through what are the plausible reasons for endogeneity in your data. Articles that present guidelines on endogeneity assumption to uh, endogeneity analysis or instrumental variables typically list quite a few different techniques. These different techniques are based on, on a few simple ideas. How they then differ beyond those ideas is that some of them make different assumptions based on uh, whether you can assume homoscedasticity or, or whether you cannot assume it, whether you have independent observations or not. Let's take a look at what the basic idea of these tests are. So this is the simple uh, instrument of variable model and uh, the endogeneity, the no endogeneity assumption is that x is uncorrelated with u y. If z is a valid instrument then the only reason why x might correlate with u y is the correlation would be u x the error term of the first stage regression and u y the error term of the other uh, main regression from the second stage. So testing for endogeneity basically um, boils down to testing if this correlation is non-zero. If the correlation between those two error terms is non-zero, then we have an endogeneity problem, assuming that the instrument here is, is valid. So how do we go about testing that assumption? Well, the simplest thing is if you use SCM, you get an estimate for this correlation after you free it, and you just take a look at the Z test for that correlation. If that is significant, then you conclude that uh, we have evidence that there is actually an endogeneity problem in the data and then using instrumental variables is warranted. If it's non-significant then we conclude that the instrumental variables are probably not problem or endogeneity is probably not a problem for our data we can probably forego the instrumental variables. Then we have three other a bit more complicated tests. The first one is a, a nested model comparison. So we compare two models. One is the instrumental variable model Another one is a model where we assume that there is no endogeneity by constraining this to be zero and uh, then we compare the models. The second is an augmented regression model where we uh, take the residuals from the first stage regression analysis, we use them as a predictor of y and then if those predict y then we conclude that there is an endogeneity problem. And the third one is the general Hausmann specification test which compares an efficient estimator in this case a uh, normal regression analysis against consistent estimator in this case instrument of variable estimator and checks if those are are sufficiently different that we can conclude that that one of the estimators must be inconsistent. Let's take a look at what these tests do in, in a bit more detail. So this is the um the nested model comparison, we need an unconstrained model, then we take something out from that unconstrained model to come to the constrained model. So this is a zero degrees of freedom unconstrained model and we uh, take the error correlation here out and that gives us the constrained model which has one degree of freedom and then uh, we, we compare the models. Of course this has one degree of freedom so we could just as well test it directly instead of having the saturated model here as, as a baseline. But if we have more than one instrument then uh, this nested model comparison is required. Simply testing this model is, is uh, main, it's not as good as us doing this because this is a more, more focused test. Then we have the augmented regression analysis. The augmented regression analysis, is, the idea is that we do the first stage regression of the, the two stage least squares. So we regress the endogenous variable x on the instrument. And then we take uh, normally in two stage least squares we take the fitted values and we regress y on the fitted values so that's the second stage regression analysis. In the augmented regression test we uh, include also the residual the difference between the observed x and the predicted x to the second stage regression analysis. They are, this is going to be uncorrelated with uh, the fitted x so it doesn't really affect our estimate beta here at all 
but the beta residual here whether the residual explains why is our test of endogeneity. If the residual explains why more than uh, at all then we conclude that we have an endogeneity problem. If and then we need to use instrument of arbus. If the uh, coefficient beta residual is non-significant then we would conclude that there is not enough evidence to conclude that we have an endogeneity problem and therefore we can uh, we don't need to use instrumental variables. Then the final test is the Hausmann specification test. This is a, a general specification test and I'll explain it in more detail in another video. But the idea here is in, with the test is that we have an efficient estimator and we have a consistent estimator. So we know that OLS regression here is efficient. So it's the most precise way of calculating the relationship between X and Y assuming there is no endogeneity. If there's endogeneity then OLS regression is going to be inconsistent. Instrumental variable estimator on the other hand is consistent under, under endogeneity but it is inefficient. So if there is no endogeneity then instrument and variable and OLS regression are both consistent but instrument and variable is estimator is a lot less precise. The idea of the Hausmann test is that we compare these two estimators how, how much they differ estimated from a sample and then we compare that against the estimated difference of their, uh, their variances and uh, the, the, the intuition behind the test is that uh, if the difference between two estimates is large then we cannot attribute that difference to the differences in, in efficiency but it must be because one of these estimators is inconsistent. In this case we will conclude that the OLS in, is inconsistent because it is uh, because the instrument of variable estimator is consistent under more general assumptions. I'll explain this test in, in more detail in another video but this is a, a very general test it sometimes requires large samples to, to work, but it's, it's something that um, it's, it's highly useful in different contexts. So that was the basic ideas of, of these tests and uh, these four different basic ideas underlie all these tests listed for example here. And uh, which test you pick then depends on, on what test your statistical software offers and what estimation technique you apply to, for estimating the model. If you apply for example two states least squares then you can't do likelihood ratio test because that requires maximum likelihood estimation and so on. But, but um, basically then it becomes um, just a matter of preference after you have uh, checked which of these are, are applicable and then you pick the one that you like the most.